We've got guests galore, and this guest, or these two guests, are amazing. Uh, you've seen their show, The History Show. Kim Sweet and her husband Tim Sweet were on The History Show, and they did about 28 episodes of The History Show. Rick Kepler put it together, he filmed it, he wrote it, and they did such a beautiful job on the show. And they're here today to tell you all about something that I've been wanting to tell you about for a long time, that this lake, Big Bear Lake, was about 60 feet higher at one time than it is right now. And it's almost the full lake right now. It's about uh, 72. We're actually down one foot nine inches as of Monday. And um, probably this coming Monday, we'll be down one foot 10 inches, which is nothing. It's the highest recorded lake ever in October. But if you can imagine it's 60 feet higher than it is right now, here they are, Kim Sweet and Rick Kepler. Thank you, Noel. Good day, guys. Good Thanks morning. Um, we talk about this, the lake being, uh, you know, 60 feet higher than it is. And you know more about it than anybody because you've studied this area. And I think that people would be very interested to know most of their houses would be underwater right now if it were how many years ago? Yeah, we, this, you're right, Noel. You, you called in last time we were on air and you had this question. And I, even though I've had this report for years uh, and I've read it, <laughs> I, I didn't realize the lake level was that much higher. I knew there was a time in the past where Big Bear Lake and uh, Baldwin Lake were combined into one lake without the dam, but I didn't realize it was 60 feet higher. And um, we pulled up this report and we brought some maps today to show you uh, you're right. There, um, not sure where to begin on this, well, I but think that, um, <clears throat> that the first the map in 1845 shows us where we were in 1845. Correct. Yeah. Before so, we had uh, the dam. If uh, Mr. Haston will put on the now, yeah, that's 1845. That's before the old dam, uh, which went up in uh, 1885. You're correct. You know that that as you can see, there is a, a tiny lake there in the valley. Uh, it's it uh, only about 1,000 acres, and uh, it was pretty much centered right out of. Um, Fawn skin and, and uh, opposite one of the points out there. Uh, before the dam was built, that's pretty much what this valley and, looked like. And Baldwin Lake had water and so did Irwin at that time. Yeah. Now Baldwin Lake probably had water for a million years because the depth of Baldwin Lake, the sediment depth, is about 900 feet. That, yeah, that's very true. In fact, one of the other things on that particular map on the right-hand side, lower right-hand side, you see that word sugarloaf. And that word sugarloaf is not, they're not saying where sugarloaf was, they're saying that's a, that's, that is an area called the Sugarloaf Alluvial fan, uh, fan. This is all debris that poured down into the valley. And in 1845, um, you can see there's kind of a trench there between Big Bear Lake and Baldwin Lake. And what happened was, we are going to now go back about um, 20,000 years. Let's go back 20,000 years. And this is what it looked like back then. So uh, Baldwin and Irwin were connected. They were connected. They cut, they'd cut a path through the alluvial fan, and, and there was no dam at the west end, which is the left side of this photograph. That was there all were, just boulders. That was all boulders, and basically the lake was 60 feet higher, which means that Right here in the village, uh, there was no village. Obviously. Well, it, we were like this, this building was lakefront, lakefront property. Lakefront property. You're right, uh huh. And Moon Ridge was lakefront property. Exactly, and your place would, would naturally and be Bear underwater. And Bear City was was underwater. Exactly, and uh, this has all been verified. This isn't speculation. This report is massive. They um, have high water marks all along the south shore. Very stable level high water marks at 60 feet higher than the lake is today. Amazing. And on the uh, along the south shore. And on the North Shore, there's also 25-foot high watermarks over by the Big Bear Ranger Station. This has all been verified in this report. And, and if you watch so, the history show, uh, Kim, you've, you've done a lot of, uh, part of parts of the show on, mm -hmm. on this, haven't you? Yes, it? yes. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's really interesting to me of the time frame of how the Earth changes in that amount of time and that you had mentioned that there was a report about some amazing fossils that were at that water line. And so um, we have marine life way over our heads, yeah, pretty much. Right here, sure. um, and, and so now we have an, a, an ability to study it. We've yeah. got maps and proof. And another interesting fact, too, is that um, there has been some archaeological evidence that um, there were some paleo-Indians here 
uh, paleo early man because there's been large spear points found. Oh. And um, so we know that not only archaically things have changed um, and we've had ice ages come and go, but uh, the larger the spear point, the bigger the game. Ah, so so, the, so the entire the entire area was completely yeah. uh, completely changed, and we do know that there were people um, at some level, whether it was a lone person or whether it was a, a small clan or Amazing. whatever. There it, have it been people pal- through here um, as far back as ten thousand years. Ten thousand yeah. years. Yes. We're just we're just re- we're just recent, and I think geologically one of the important things is the reason people ask, well, how could you have a lake sixty feet higher?" Is that we have um, a fault running through this you know, through, through this valley. And we have constant movement. And according to this report, um, at that time, 20,000 years ago, Baldwin Lake was lower than Big Bear Lake. And, and, it, and it used and, to drain that way. And it drained, But yeah, I think the it, one, the it, one yeah, thing... Yeah, it, it, it drained out into the Mojave Desert. The, and, one thing uh, that re- the one thing that this report doesn't have is the fact that we have, we are in a, such a seismic area. Yeah. And because of the seismic area that we're in, uh, the... Uh, the boulders that we find in the bottom of Bear Creek, these huge boulders, <coughs> probably filled the gap where the dam is now and caused the lake to go up and down over the centuries because you'd have an earthquake, the boulders would roll back down into Bear Creek if you ever take a, ro- a walk down there, yeah. these huge boulders. And then another seismic activity would happen and the boulders would fill up that little uh, this is dam a, this, area. This is a, so it, it would, exactly. I'm sure that yeah. the lake would be going up and down, and I don't think this report had that. Well, it. see, we haven't stopped this movement. We're the uh, this report actually did reference that, and yes, it, it was a combination of uplifting. It was a combination of alluvial. Uh, debris flowing into the valley, which at points is uh, a few hundred feet deep, um, and like you say, with activity dropping boulders down, Bear Creek, Bear Creek was higher. Bear Creek is fairly new geologically, and traditionally, over the last tens of thousands of years, the lake drained down to the Mojave Desert, and it's only been recently that it's been draining down through from from Bear from Creek. Here, yeah, right. And we are constantly going through. You know. The way our lake is right now, it is changing. We're raising, or we're uplifting at different rates in the valley. We're uplifting by as much as 30 inches every 100 years, if uh, my my understanding is correct. So um, two, three (coughs) hundred years from now, if we're still around, we're going to see a different village could be the new ski resort, straight up. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. (laughs) (laughs) If uh, you haven't taken a walk and taken a look at the dam and the new bridge and everything, it's really (coughs) worthwhile to go see because... Uh, there's a lot of history here. We have gold history. Kim, of course, has talked about the gold history here in Hokum Valley and Doble and all those wonderful cities that were here for many, many years. And the big gold rushes, not only in 1860, but in around the 1900s, mm-hmm. all the way to 1920, people were still searching for gold. And I know you had a show, Kim, that talked about if somebody uh, now had the money to dig into those mountains, we'd probably find a lot of gold in them there hills right now. That's absolutely correct. Um, we've been told that, that less than an eighth of, of the, the gold has even been really? even tapped. Yeah. I mean, there is all kinds of gold. The problem is, 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 is pinpointing the, it exactly and getting it out of the ground. Well, actually, and it has cost. Yes. cost. Well, now, it, it yeah. costs cost per, be 25, 30, 40 and, million yeah. to get it. Yes. However, with gold at the price that it is now, get a you know, shovel. 16, 17, yeah. 1800 dollars an ounce, uh-huh. Then it becomes worthwhile if you find a few ounces at eighteen hundred yes. bucks an ounce. Yes. Uh, so don't be surprised if you don't see some uh, people digging up there. Claim yeah. jump, claim, <laughs> claim jumping. Jump. Can they still claim, <laughs> claim jump up? There? Uh, yeah. Well, they can, but they get in big trouble if they do. They, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot. well, anyway. So now we'll go we'll, now. See this uh, picture okay. now. This is uh, after the dam was built. This in, yeah. In eighteen forty uh, in eighteen eighty five. And what happened, it submerged a lot of trees in it. About 9,000 trees. Right? Yes, 9, yes. 9,000. Uh-huh. Yeah, 9,000 trees were drowned. And um, it caused several, well, it was good and bad, actually. Um, ecologically, it was great for, for the trout that were planted in 1897 yeah. to start to create mm-hmm. the tourist resort that we have today. We had huge trout in the lake back then. Yeah. I mean, they, they, because they fed off all the grubs that were living in the dead stumps yes. underwater and so forth. There's and the old dam as There's it the old went dam, up. yeah, looking, looking east towards uh, looking all the trees. And it buried all, all those trees. And, of course, that, that caused a major problem mm-hmm. for future boaters. 
And as you know, um, where your home is located, you experienced that firsthand. And so it was it was ecologically good for for the fish, but not good for the boaters. But and this it, yeah, it, this this photo emphasizes this. This yes. is this is a dock. There's a guy sitting in the boat on the left-hand side of the screen, and those are all stumps sticking out on top of the lake. And I mean, sticking out of the lake. When the lake level is higher, the lake level is low here, those stumps were right at the water line or an inch or two below. So and this was, might have been uh, anywhere <coughs> from 1952 to 1965, basically. Uh, or what probably, it could maybe even a little bit earlier. Uh, any With time, the stumps? Yeah, the, these stumps were rotting away over the, and they, they've been in the lake. You know, you and I talked about this before. They were in the they, lake. Yeah, we didn't the take lake them out in, of there in until the 50s. Or, mid -60s. Yeah, some of them were there as late as the 50s. We used yes. to play in them with a kid. And, of course, we've been hacking down <coughs> on those tree stumps for a hundred years trying to get them as the as mm -hmm. the lake level went down yeah, we hacked to away to get them out of there. Yeah, we're going to talk about that yeah. in a minute and just before we do I wanted to show this photo. This is a photo I didn't even know existed. <clears throat> this is a shot of the bottom of the lake at the dam from the lakeside and it basically shows the lake completely 100 percent dry. Yeah. And, I, and I say Rick this has to be pre-1910 before we have any lake levels because after 1910 we had water in the lake. Yeah. Even though it might be a little water, like in 1962, 3, 4, or uh, in the 50s, uh, this particular <clears throat> lake level is zero, so this is before 1910 sometime. Yes, it is. And, you know, this, this is the reason that uh, they built the Eastwood Dam that we have right now. Redlands needed water desperately in their citrus groves, and they would drain this lake every year. It could be full, and they could actually drain the whole lake every single year, and they literally needed more water. So when they built the Eastwood Dam that replaced the Rock Dam, it increased the holding capacity of the lake by two and a half times. That was in 1912. Uh, 1912, yes. yeah, and they increased the holding capacity of the lake by two and a half times. The Rock Dam, as great as it was, just did not meet the needs. And even then, when it increased the lake level, the quantity of the water in the lake that much, <clears throat> as you know, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they were still draining it. Way yeah, we, well, we'd start in the year. beginning of the summer, and by the end of the summer, they'd take another 10, 15 <coughs> feet off, and we could start to walk across the lake there. Yes, it was. And your dad's mm -hmm. uh, pickup truck got caught in the middle oh of Oh, my that. gosh, more than <laughs> once. But I have to say, you know, when we look at this picture that Tom has up on the screen right now um, that's empty, I also have to question, what was the seismic activity at that point? Was was any seismology possibly also contributing to the fact that maybe the the lake was not only were they draining it, but could the seismology possibly have helped con contribute to it's, the dry bottom? You know, th there's been a lot of questions as to how solid the bedrock is beneath the lake. We mm -hmm. have we have a lot of of alluvium debris, dirt, in other words, on top of bedrock in this valley, and. Um, they had a big problem with the Eastwood Dam when they originally built it because the bedrock was cracked. It leaked like a sieve, not through the dam, but underneath the dam. Oh, yeah. <coughs> we had natural natural uh, leakage down there. Well, so. We're going to go to the next picture here, which is uh, 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 <coughs> close to okay. my heart because yeah. that's where our house is, now our cabin, built in 1946. And that was the sawmill that was built in, around, in the 20s. And a lot of the houses around <coughs> the area in the lake were utilizing this sawmill and the wood from this sawmill. This, this it's a shot from the lake yeah. uh, side. <coughs> I think I think the next shot shows exactly where uh, our there there's that, the, that our is, cabin now, and that's exactly if you back up one. That time, is Noel's house, and there and it that's is. That's the shot from the same angle taken many 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 years ago. There, where there the was, sawmill yeah, was. Pretty much what they did with all these. I think I explained to everybody that this lake drowned over nine thousand trees. There was no economic reason to build sawmills in Bear Valley. It cost too much to haul the lumber out of here down to San Mundino. But they needed this sawmill and a couple others to get rid of the dead trees in the lake. They'd go out there in the wintertime on the slice ice. Slice them. Slice them off at the, at the uh, water line. Then they would, uh, in the summertime, um, hook them up to boats and they'd dump them in your yard and uh, cut them up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Noel's yard, <laughs> believe it or not, and this is where his house yes. sat, so uh, it does sit that's now. That's where my mom and, and dad uh, built the house, and that's where Catherine yeah. and I live now. And it is the old sawmill, which is kind of interesting. Um, we have to go to commercial, don't we? Is that right, Tom? Is that what you're giving me the <clears> cue? I always say it's an off-color hand, uh, Italian hand gesture. That <laughs> yeah. uh, it's but that, but that is definitely the cue to go to commercial, because they're paying the bills. Mm. So here it is. <laughs> 